How can students organize their schedules to maximize their co-op job search? That's a great question. We, we have a lot more students trying to find co-ops out there and having a strong organization can be very, very beneficial. What I've been telling my students this semester, and several of them have actually come back and said this was extremely helpful in securing a co-op, is to pretend that you have a 40-hour work week, which is divided up between your classes, homework assignments, if you have your on-campus job, and then the rest of the time is your co-op search. And if you can divide, use a spreadsheet, divide it up Monday through Friday from like nine to five, that will give you some sort of organizational structure. Make sure you're working 32 to 40 hours a week. And with this structure is, that means you have a work-life balance. You'll be able to do things at nighttime on your own and not worry about work. Over the weekends, that's your time. You can go to the beach, you can watch a movie, you can go out with your friends, go on a mini vacation. That, that Monday through Friday should be spent on class work, going to courses, cl classes, as well as your co-op search. I love the idea of treating your job search like a job and not just when I'm gonna to get to it or when I find free time, but if you plan it, prioritize it, then those good things are gonna happen. And another really important part of the job search, especially here in America, is networking. So John, what are some networking tips for students, especially looking for co-ops and internships? Well, first, everyone's networking. They just don't realize it. When you hear the word networking, that's almost like a taboo or a four-letter word, as we say. You don't want to get scared. But networking is just having a conversation, reaching out to people. Now, when you're talking to people about the jobs and how you're out there marketing yourself, that can feel a very a little, a little intimidating. What you want to do is, when you're networking, is you want a reason for the, your contact to call you back or to continue that conversation. So tell them something that you can offer. If ask the question, what keeps you up at night? What worries you? And you can say, well, I can help with that. Northeast University, thousands of people, especially professors, there's bound to be somebody that can help a person. So go out there, just show interest, listen more than talk. People love talking about themselves. If you listen to somebody, have a reason to give back or to provide them something in return, they're going to be more willing to continue that relationship. One mistake people make is like they network with people on LinkedIn. They immediately put in their resume, say, can you, can you recommend me? Here's a job. Here's wrong approach to take. What you want to say is, I saw your profile, LinkedIn. I'd love to get to know you better. And it's a long-term relationship compared to a quick hit. Yeah, networking is about relationships. It's not about transactions or manipulation. And in my personal opinion, LinkedIn, I don't really call that real networking because it's virtual. Um, I would say what is more, you know, relational, conversational, you know, offline as much as you can be. That's what real networking is. So I love your thoughts on that. If you get a haircut, if you go to the bar, those people know a lot of people. <laughs> that yeah. you never know and just reaching out, tell them that's your story, listen, talk, and you might come across. I had a student once that got a co-op from meeting somebody at a bar. It was a long, they had mm -hmm. multiple conversations, but it was one job he, he applied to and it offered, ended up in an offer. Yeah, I love it. You got to get out of your bubble. And for international students, you need to go be around Americans, go be around professionals and give them the opportunity to get to know you. My friends, we're talking about expert tips and strategies for landing those co-op jobs here in America. And welcome to Chine Coaching. At Chine Coaching, we're all about helping international students and professionals be successful in America, especially in their job search, getting those co-ops and internships. And we've got John, who's a coordinator of the co-op program there at Northeastern Boston, giving some great advice. So John, welcome back and give us uh, a brief introduction of yourself. Again, my name is John Blakeney. I'm a COPA coordinator at Northeast University, where I've been spending about five and a half years here. I love my job. I love helping students in their COPA search. I love teaching, and I love making those connections between students and employers. And I can't wait to tell you some of my experiences or my advice and to hear back from all of you. Definitely. We've got a few more great tips in this video that John is going to guide you guys in your job search. So next, let's talk about resume. What are some resume tips 
that help students stand out and land co-ops? There are a couple. One is formatting. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that someone wants to read <laughs> the resume. So if you have no margins, fonts all over the place, no one's going to read it. Keep it to one page. It's like when your teacher says, read this chapter, immediately you all look at how many pages are in the chapter. And if there are any pictures, same thing with a resume. Second, bullet points. When you write an effective bullet point, you want to start off with a strong action verb. You want to tell them what you did and you want to quantify. And all I care about is what you did. I don't care about your group. I don't care about the employer. All I care is about your experience. And it has to be related to the job you're applying to. That way, you know, therefore, you need to tweak your resume based on the job. Look at the keywords and add it as long as it's true, because you never, ever want to lie on a resume. Yeah, I love those tips. Very simple, but very powerful things you can be doing in your resume. Now let's talk about the importance of job candidate confidence in your job search here in America. Yeah, I believe that confidence plays a major role in whether or not you get a co-op or not. I did a survey and I presented at a conference that shows that a person's or a student's perceived confidence leads them to get a co-op compared to those that don't have the confidence. What that means is, do you have confidence in writing a great resume or a cover letter? Do you have that confidence to interview with somebody or network? And I'm not saying if you do or not, it's, this is all internal. If you feel good about yourself, if you feel confident that you can do these skills, you're, it's going to show. It's going to show when you network, it's going to show when you interview, it's going to show when you make those personal connections. Yeah, I know that. When you have that confidence, you just communicate better, you connect better, relationships happen. And that's a really important part about um, job search interviews. It's not just what you know, but it's also how you connect with people here in America. And like you mentioned before, practice. The more you practice these things, the more confident and comfortable you're going to be at them. My friends, if you're learning a lot and loving this video, give a big like and thumbs up to say thanks to John to sharing his experience and his tips to guide you guys. And our chai question for this video is what job search tips would you add? Go ahead and tell us in the comments, what other things would you add to help students in their job search to get internships, co-ops? Would love to learn from our community as well. Let us know in the comments. And next, John, let's talk about having an effective interview. What are some suggestions that really help students do a great job at a job interview? When I teach this to my class, I say, it's like dating. <laughs> What you want to do is you want to make a connection and everything has to be about the employer. So when they ask the question, tell me about yourself, you want to tell your skill sets, but you, want, but you want to relate it back to the job that you're applying to, as well as to the employer. For example, therefore, that's why I want to go to this company because you do this, this, this that I, that I read about and I have to make, make it a connection. I also state that if you have a positive sounding question, which is, tell me about yourself, tell me about a project that went well, et cetera. I say, relate it back again to the job that you're applying to, as well as to the company you're applying to as well. And you don't want to say, I want to work for a company like yours. You want to say, I want to work for you. <laughs> I want to work for your organization. If it's a negative sounding question, like tell me a weakness, what they want to hear is, how did you learn from it? Everyone makes mistakes, but what did you learn? How did you grow? And that's what they're looking for. And then finally, you have those one word answers such as, do you like Northeast University? Instead of saying a yes or a no, they want you to expand upon that as well. And why? Why? Again, relate it back to the company and why, how you can add value. Many times students might say, well, I want to learn from the company. I want to learn all these new skills. I believe the company is saying, no, I have this opportunity here. I need this job filled. And I want you to be part of it. So what, add value. Tell them that why you're a good fit mm -hmm. to make yeah. their life easier. Yeah, the interview isn't about you. It's about what you can do for the company. So right. you want to frame things about what's going to be for the company, the impact, the value, the problem solving. And you can still talk about the same things, but you want to frame and filter around the company and put the spotlight there rather than you and your needs. Is that what you're trying to say? Perfect. Yep. You said it much more eloquently than me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. What else about interviews have you seen students do well or really help them out? Thank you notes. 
the idea of writing a thank you note and tailor it to the person that you interviewed you. So if you had three people interviewing you, that's three different thank you notes and tailor it to that job. We've had employers reach out to us and say, where are the thank you notes? That they, you know, they get disappointed. So that is one of the things that can win you over. I actually had a student once that did not get an odd job, wrote back and said, well, thank you for this opportunity. And because of that, that student got another interview with the same company because of the way he handled that. You never know, but thank you notes can go a long way in a positive direction. Yeah, those little relationship connections and extra thoughts of making other people a little bit more important really stand out amongst all the competition. I, what I would also say is tell the employer that you want to work for them. It's, you know, not only do you want, let me rephrase, not only is it nice to hear personally, like, hey, you're John, you're doing a good job, or we want to hire you, having the candidate tell the employer that you want to work for them can go a long way because you're showing interest. Students or candidates that show interest, that know about the company, is going to have much more of an impact in a positive direction compared to somebody that just knows all the stuff but just doesn't show any interest in the company. So with all these amazing tips, unfortunately, sometimes students still don't get a job. So what would you tell students who don't end up landing a co-op? That's a great question. We hear that quite a bit. A couple things. One, students might be upset. They might be jealous. They might feel you know, depressed. Those feelings are valid. Don't have anyone ever tell you, don't feel like that way. I know it's like to find a job. I was unemployed like three times in a five-year period. I get it. Your feelings are valid and just work through them. However, the quicker you can try to get back on the horse, as they say, and try to move forward, the quicker you might lead to that job and you feel better about yourself but your feelings are valid and don't say, don't have anyone say, no, they're not. Second, if you go to Northeast or any college and you don't get a co-op, you're leaving with a great degree, either for a bachelor's or a graduate degree, and you can use those skills and that networking and everybody that you met to help you move forward to find that permanent job. Again, it might feel frustrating, but if you have this thing called a growth mindset, I really believe when you look back on it, things happen for a reason. And I really believe things happen for a reason in a positive direction, even though at the time, maybe not so. I wouldn't be here at Northeastern if my PAC experience hadn't occurred. And I love my job and I wouldn't trade it for anything else. I love what I'm doing. And if the things in the past didn't happen, I wouldn't be here today. So that's the way I look at it. No, I love it. What a great encouragement and, and kind of mindset and mentality there. And yeah, just because you don't get an internship or a co-op, it is not the end of the world. I know plenty of student friends myself who couldn't get one, but were still able to great get great full-time jobs after graduating. And there's great lessons learned even in these hard things. And so I really appreciate you sharing that, that tough stuff as well, John. That's really important. My friends, don't miss out the other video we've made with John about the most common questions about co-op programs in America. We answer all of your big, important questions about co-op, how it works, important details. So be sure to check out that other video as well. We'll have links for that. And John, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for working hard and serving all the students and then sharing your knowledge with the Chai and Coaching community. We really appreciate you. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. A lot of fun. Thank you. Definitely. And my friends, be sure to connect with us online on social media, on Instagram and LinkedIn. We'll have John's um, LinkedIn as well and links to any you and more about their co-op program. Make sure you're subscribed to our e-newsletter for tips and resources and events. And we really appreciate you guys tuning in, being part of the Chine Coaching community and good luck in that job search. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.